The Master's Mysteries Tales of Magical Mastery Episode 101 In the past few years, in a village called Luja Fortress in the north, there came a person dressed in black. This person in black walked straight toward a large mansion, immediately catching the attention of a young person sitting in front of the door. Hey, outsider, today the clan is having a meeting. No one is allowed to approach. Hurry, leave. It turns out this village has a centuries-old prominent family. At this moment, several family heads are discussing matters with the clan leader inside. Upon seeing someone approaching, the young person immediately spoke to stop them. I have some matters to discuss with the clan leaders. Please be understanding. The person in black was somewhat polite, but had a firm tone, expressing a desire to meet the Logia clan leader. Go away. What are you? Not just anyone can see the clan leader. This young person was a bit stubborn, wielding authority without reason, showing disrespect in their tone. Then don't blame me for being impolite. Because of this statement, the face of the person in black instantly turned serious. This year, with the blessings of various immortal families, we've had favorable weather. Speaking of which, in Loja Fortress, the Loja family is a traditional prominent family that involves immortals from the outside regions in the affairs of the Central Plains. When people in the surrounding areas fall ill or encounter issues at home, they come seeking help. Yeah, we must express gratitude to the immortal families. This year, let's build another white immortal hall, over the centuries, they have indeed ensured the well-being of the local people. In light of this, the Luja family is contemplating offering more blessings as a token of gratitude to the immortal families. We also need to make more offerings to our Liu Immortal Hall. Our family's immortal beings especially love eggs. But unexpectedly, while discussing this, a sound of breaking wooden boards rang out. Following that, something flew in. What's going on? Didn't Xuanju stay outside the door? At first, everyone couldn't see clearly what it was and was somewhat stunned. How could it be, Xuanju? But when that thing steadied, it immediately terrified everyone. It was actually a bloody human head. Who is this person, daring to commit murder in broad daylight? Xuanju is the son of the Liu immortal family head. Everyone couldn't stay calm anymore and rushed out of the house, only to see a person standing outside. I treated you with respect, but it seems I failed to attract the attention of the Logia clan leader. Seeing the faint blood stains on the person's hands, could it be that he cut off Xuanju's head with his bare hands? This person is truly unfathomable. Who are you, daring to commit murder in Logia Fortress? It's too audacious, as the clan leader of Logia Fortress, one must assess the situation, but one cannot lose their dignity, especially when someone has already committed murder on their doorstep. I am the leader of the God Dragon Shaman. Either submit to us or disband. What? God Dragon Shaman? Too arrogant. Upon hearing the proclaimed title, everyone was momentarily stunned. The God Dragon Shaman is a recently emerging power in the Northern Desert continually infiltrating the central plains, which naturally stirred aversion among the people. Submit to me. Dream on. In response, clan leader Lu's momentum surged. With a loud roar, he charged towards the man. Presumptuous, relying on a few wild immortal beings with minimal cultivation, you think you can oppose my divine sect. Yet, the sect leader faced the crowd's attack without a trace of fear. Sure enough, when everyone released their own immortal beings, they were immediately dumbfounded. The opponent's summoned immortal being turned out to be a monstrous dragon. It was something beyond the capability of the crowd to handle. So, an uneven massacre began. Bad, I'm back. Half an hour later, a child came bouncing back to the entrance of the mansion, appearing to have returned from playing outside. Dead, however, Upon entering, the child saw a courtyard filled with corpses. These were the uncles and cousins who usually doted on him. Of course, amidst the blood pool was his own father. But at this moment, 
There was a bloody hole in his chest, turning him into a lifeless body. Dad, wake up. And among these corpses stood a figure in black. The child, not understanding what had happened, cried and rushed to his father, shaking him incessantly. Wake up. The appearance of the child quickly caught Duke Xianjin's attention. Bad person, you killed my dad. I want to kill you. According to Du Xianjin's intention, this should have been nipped in the bud because it would damage the reputation if the incident became known. Besides, leaving this child behind would inevitably lead to trouble later. Give me back my dad. But the power displayed by this child when angry surprised him. He's quite a talent. A small child with surprisingly unique bones naturally emitted a subtle and imperceptible true energy. So, Du Xianjin temporarily changed his mind. He pressed his big hand on the child's crown, and immediately a surge of true energy formed. Then the child's body went limp, immediately fainting. Du Xianjin picked up the child and left the Luojia fortress. It's unclear what method he used, but this child surprisingly forgot everything from before. He became his adopted son and stayed in the shamanic dragon sect learning many skills from Du Xianjin. Why are you telling me these things, you madman, you say? Is this child treating the thief as his father? In the blink of an eye, this child grew to seven or eight years old, becoming a bit more sensible. After hearing Master Wui finish the story of the massacre, he seemed to realize something, immediately excitedly questioning. What I say doesn't matter. What matters is that you need to remember something. Don't touch me. Get your hands off me. Master Wui didn't answer his question. He extended his hand, pressed it on the child's crown, and injected a trace of true energy. The child only felt that in his mind, a door that had been sealed for a long time was suddenly opened. All memories instantly rushed into his mind. Those beloved family members, once again presented before him in a bloody scene. At this moment, a seven or eight-year-old child couldn't bear such a psychological impact. He stayed stunned for a full half cup of tea's time before tears gushed out. Then his legs went soft and he knelt on the ground. Dad, I'm not human. The memories of the past quickly merge with the memories of the past few years in the shamanic dragon sect Overwhelming the child, he completely lost control and started crying hysterically. Dad, I was wrong indeed. Such an impact might not just affect a child. Even an adult could instantly collapse. Dad, your child is unfilial. I will avenge you. The child cried for more than an hour before slowly calming down. Master Wui never stopped him, allowing him to cry to his heart's content. I will kill Duoxin Jun. Child, all of this is indeed harsh for you. When he heard that the child wanted to avenge this deep-seated hatred, Master Wui squatted down and comforted him. I am an old friend of your father. It took me a lot of effort to find you. Originally, I hesitated about whether to tell you. But thinking about it, you shouldn't continue like this. It turns out that Master Wui is an old friend of the head of the Luo family. After the Luo family was annihilated, he conducted a thorough investigation over the years to uncover the truth. You are already a young man. What you need to do now is endure. Only by learning to endure can you achieve great things. After secretly observing the child for a few months and discovering his resilient character and kind heart, Master Wui decided to reveal the truth about the scar. But you won't be alone. I will stay here with you. You must learn skills properly. From then on, Master Wui, in order to nurture this child, also joined the shamanistic dragon cult. With his skills and cultivation, he quickly became a high-ranking protector in the cult. Someday, everything will follow the will of heaven, and under his guidance and companionship, the child grew up little by little. Master, are you suggesting? Yes. At this point, the child has grown to 14, becoming a handsome young man however, 
the young man never understood when the awaited moment would come. The great battle is about to begin. You can take revenge. Of course, if you still want to, one might expect this news to excite the young man, but he showed no reaction. Perhaps he coveted the position of the shamanistic dragon cult's young master and had forgotten the hatred. Of course not. The scenes of bloody carnage with the remains of his loved ones have been engraved in his mind. It's not that he is not excited, but his character has been forged even stronger. I've been waiting for this day for a long time. Many people here have guessed that this young man is the outstanding successor of the immortal family mountain in the future, Luo Sheng. Dad, your child can finally let you rest in peace, Luo Sheng who once led the nine most elite routes of the immortal family and single-handedly eradicated the legend of the White Lotus holy religion. Such a big wound, and you say it's nothing. What about your face? Turn around, and let's talk about the lake on the back of the Sanji range. At this time, everyone is preparing, and Chiadi took advantage of this time to clean and bandage Liu Fengdi's wound. Chiadi, by the lakeside, a gentle breeze blew, the nine-headed serpent, and the black fox, along with the Sanji three killers, went to find the best battlefield. Alone, the atmosphere between the two intensified. Xiaodi, the big battle may be very dangerous. I don't know if we can survive in the end. Fengji, there's something I've been wanting to tell you. 